Me and my fiance were coming back, and this was in Ohio, uh, coming back from eating dinner. Me and a group of friends, we were leaving outside of uh, Green, no, not Green Street, we were leaving outside of Heaven, um, and it's a gay club. Like, I was at the bar the other night um, for a friend's birthday. We're all dressed pretty flamboyantly, you know, I'm 18, like, brand new to the gay club scene. And we were just holding hands. I had on, like, a fur coat and, like, a dress and jeans underneath. A car comes by, somebody rolls down the window, I see five or six people in a small little car. So we're walking down the street after the club and a car pulls up. And as I was like walking back to my car, and then I hear out of the car, if that's not the biggest group of faggots I've ever seen. And somebody like screamed, hey homo out of the car. And I was like, oh, ugh, you're funny. And then somebody like followed it up with like, fuck you faggot. And they just start screaming faggot at me. So this story was um, the starting point emotionally for me to start what I call my reclaiming piece. I recently wanted to create a piece that allowed the audience to feel the same thing I felt and or understand what I felt. I call it. And then they start screaming, I bet your butt hurts. Ouch. Your butt hurts or my butt hurts. How can you do that to yourself? What? That's my makeup. <laughs> you just like Even here on like February 1 um, is when I was gay bashed. So, you know, we exchanged words, we're fighting back and forth. Um, you know, verbally. And then I turn around the corner, I'm walking to the car, I'm almost to the car, and before I knew it, I was knocked to the ground. I was blindsided by two guys. They just came up to me and just punched me. And then I, next thing I know, I'm on the ground and then I'm just getting kicked and punched and beaten. And so I finally like stand up, you know, I try to swing back at a couple of fights and then I'm back down on the ground again. I just know that I was sent to the hospital. They fractured my arm, um, bruised up my face pretty bad. Um, I had to be prescribed pain pills and keep my arm like in a cast for a while. I feel like violence is usually thought of as interpersonal and physical or things of that nature where it's very blatant, like a fist fight or um, getting assaulted or something like that. But in my mind, violence is anything which violates. So I feel like my autonomy, my right to my body, my right to adorn it how I want to, when that's violated, that's a form of violence to me. There's one guy in high school, every single day, every time I'd pass by him, he'd always be waiting outside of a building for me, and every time I passed by him, he had something to say. It never failed. Every day, you know, one day, what are you doing, faggot? Or like, next day, he'd be blowing kisses at me, and the next day, he would have his friends with him, they'd be like, look at that disgusting homo, and just different stuff back and forth, and every single day, he made it a point. It's like I was his game. And you know, I let him get to me for the longest, and then eventually, I was like, you know, fuck this dude. I don't even care anymore. I feel hyper-visible a lot. Like when I wake up and I put something on and I do my eyeliner and then I like look in the mirror and I'm like, you know, you did five out of five, you did good today. And then I walk outside and I'm like, okay, this isn't going to be as widely accepted. Not that I care about acceptance, but it does make me feel awkward a lot of the time. I can't just like walk around like living my life like scared or like afraid. People are gonna harass me, I get it. I move on, you know what I mean? Like I can't just like live my whole life in fear and like worried about like what other people have to say. Faggot. F. F. Fa. F. A. Fa. Fad. Back. Go. When I do A. flames in the first piece, I make a symbol with my arms to be flames so that people have the direct reference to that. Failure. I have never been comfortable with using the word faggot before this piece. Um, I've understood it as a right of reclaiming. I was almost uncomfortable with the word queer for a long time, um, just because of the negative connotations that I've had. And using this work, using my choreographic process as a tool 
not only to show my ideas and my artistry, but also as a tool emotionally and growing as a person has been very apparent to me. I mean, me personally, I live in my own world entirely. So when I'm in a public space, I'm really not paying attention to anyone else really. And I feel like I've done that almost as like a defense mechanism in a sense, just from everything that I've experienced, you know, bullying in high school, bullying out of high school, everything else. So I've just learned to just shut other people out. Cece McDonald, who's a black trans woman that defended herself against uh, a group of white folks who were calling her racist and transphobic and homophobic slurs while she was with a group of her friends who were also mostly queer and trans people of color. Um, when she defended herself after the altercation turned violent, she was the only one that was arrested. She was charged with manslaughter. I'm not sure how the sentencing went exactly, but I know that she's still in prison and she's in a men's prison. So in thinking about CC and about violence and visibility, because people obviously read her body as like a black body, and obviously also they saw it as a gender non-conforming body. So I was thinking about that and like my relation to it and how my violence is understood radically differently. Gut, gun, grim. I try to have a talk back after every showing that I have to allow an open, safe, environment where anyone can share any of the experiences that they have had or know of experiences um, and allow them that chance. Self-determination following him and in my understanding of it as a person who tries to live that out is that you get to decide how your life goes. You should get to decide how your life goes at its most basic form and in every complication that life offers. So I should get to decide how people approach me. I should get to set up boundaries. I should also get to decide how people understand and refer to me. I should get to understand myself. Um, and I should get to determine how I understand myself as long as it's not at the expense of someone else. Um, and I guess that informs my ethics and my politics on pretty much everything just pretty much everything. To create a, an open environment, and I will say that you're doing the same, um, is my goal, so that anyone can share their stories. Because everybody's experience is valuable, and sometimes that's really helpful for the process. Sometimes it's not, and I'm okay with that as well. But I wanna create an environment where we watch, we understand, and then if you feel comfortable, we share.